Hi, welcome to Hey Parents, Let's Chat. I am Jess Hunt, and today I'm going to be having a conversation with my friend Lisa um, about how to survive the parenting journey with twins. Um, and we do have three separate videos, one for babies and toddlers, one for the school age years, and today we're going to focus on the teen years. Um, so I hope that you enjoy. We are out on a boat, so I hope that the boat's movement doesn't cause any motion sickness. You might need some Dramamine before you watch the video. <laughs> I hope that you enjoy. Hi, so I'm sitting with my friend Lisa, and we are talking about how to survive the parenting journey when raising twins. Um, parenting is so super hard for all of us. Um, whether you have one, two, three, or four kids, whether they're all the same age, I mean, sorry, all different ages, but then when you have twins, wow, that becomes like a whole nother challenge. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be talking about today, dedicated to the teenage years. Um, and so let's just get a quick introduction so that you guys know about Lisa. Lisa, tell us a little bit about yourself. stay-at-home mom for the first uh, 13 years of their life, which I was I'm very um, happy I was able to do. Um, and I raised them, and now they're off in college. And I'm sitting on a beautiful boat with my friend Jess, and we're going to talk about this. Yeah, and I have <laughs> to say, um, this was such an absolutely gorgeous day that um, we decided to do this out on the boat, which is essentially pretty much Lisa's second home. She <laughs> and I spent most of her time right here on this lake, um, and I can absolutely see why. It's absolutely gorgeous. So you're probably going to hear like water lapping against the boat. You might hear a boat drive by every once in a while, and we'll have some waves to deal with, um, but it's absolutely gorgeous. So I do hope you enjoy the scenery behind us um, as we tackle those teenage years. And my goodness, there's so much to talk about. And right off the bat, man, um, I, middle school years are so tricky. And they start off all hormonal, and they're going through these phases and stages. Um, let's just talk about school for a little bit. Um, how did you handle, you know, some of those challenges with twins, um, you know, in the same class, different classes? Um, did the school give you choices? Were you able to say to them, I want my twins separate, I want them together? How did you handle some of that? I think actually the, the, before handling the, when they became a freshman, I kind of set them up beforehand to be able to take care of themselves as they got into the, into high school. So they had their routines, they had um, when they were doing their homework, their assignments, etc. Um, so they, like I said, they had a routine. So going into that freshman year, that was kind of already taken care of. So that was off my plate. Um, then um, they were in separate classes anyways. Um, they, do, they occasionally took a class together, um, but they did not have the same classes. So that was um, you know, at the same time as well. Um, friends, the friends um, category in high school became a little bit tricky. They had different sets of friends, um, and they also had some of the same sets of friends at different times. Um, the social aspect of their high school career, I think, was more of an issue than anything else. Um, really? Dealing with the social aspect, one having a boyfriend, one having a girlfriend, uh, of, of their friend group became oh, an issue. Oh, wow. Um, so yeah. that was something that really, like, it was, it was very hard for them to deal with as well. Um, let's see. So we, um, their, um, uh, their grades, um, they did both did pretty well. They, um, they both were able to um, graduate in a timely manner, get through all their classes. Um, the issue I kind of had was the expectations of some teachers because of one child, my daughter, who was who, who definitely um, had a lot more um, gumption than my son did, and had a lot more would do a lot of extracurricular activities for her classes and ask a lot of questions. So well, all kids are different, right? But the teachers don't think that. The teachers think, oh, well, I'm, I have a, I have a, I have this child, and the siblings now coming into my class. So they're so going to have the same expectation. They're going to have the same expectation. Oh, but tricky. But that child is very different, and that went through middle school as well. But you know, when they're coming into class after um, another child has come in, uh, it becomes a little bit difficult. And that child who, um, 
needs a little bit more or wants a little bit more, um, sometimes is taken for granted. And so sometimes you have to go in and say, listen, they're different. This is what this child needs, and this child may not need this as well. So yeah. some of that stuff happens, happens in high school. So, um, you know, it's the hormones um, are still rushing through them. Um, the social aspect um, with the same age group and the same um, the same friends, different friends, um, is an issue. Um, How did you handle some of the, the social turmoil with, like, well, uh, you know, wow. I mean, those years are tricky within friend groups um, and, you know, friends dealing with he said, she said, right. and I can't believe they treated me like this. I can't believe they treated you like this. Like, how... Did they, were they able to work that out um, amongst the, the pair of them as twins? Like, were they able to do that? Or did you find as a parent it was easier for you to step back and let them handle it? Or did you find that you... I forgot to turn my phone off. I should silence that. I apologize. Um, I'll tell you. What I did basically was I actually gave them a set of questions and say, why don't you guys talk about this and ask these questions pertaining to this situation. And then you guys figure it out from there. Mm -hmm. and, and, so, and they did. And most times they did. And they, they realized sometimes it was actually their sibling that might be the problem. Oh, <laughs> nice. So in some instances, they came up with that conclusion, which I already knew. I already knew it was that, that <laughs> one of my child's issues. Um, so those questions like, kind of helped them. I, I gave them some, some ideas of what they needed to do. And then I let them make those decisions from there. And they did terminate relationships. And they did, um, they've, they've had some long-term relationships. Um, and I also said, this could change tomorrow. This could change tomorrow. This is not set in stone. Don't put something in your head that thinks this relationship is going to change. Uh, it's going to be the same. Things might change. And it, with, their, with them understanding that things are fluid, mm -hmm. um, it made it a little bit easier on both of them when they had the discussions. But yeah, there are things, some things get dicey. There are friends at the house that one child didn't want to be at the house. There was an ex-girlfriend somewhere that shouldn't have been there. These things happen on a regular occasion. I think when you have some children so close in age um, in high school, um, this is going to happen. And were they able to, through it all, um, still Sometimes where you're not happy with your sibling for what they did or yeah. the way that they acted or the way that they treated somebody. Yeah. So not always. No. Yeah. Def definitely not. Not always. And I I would think that that is true um, even for siblings right. that are not twins. Mm -hmm. um, but they find ways to work through it and eventually move on and. Yeah, but that social piece must have been really tricky. There is a core to them as well, I think, and I've noticed it because I have family members that are twins, and, and I notice there is something, though, no matter how, what your, your twin can do or what they do, there's still something there that you will actually go to that for them no matter what. There's some sort of pull. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen that. I've seen that on more than one occasion where they could not like each other, not like the, the, their stance on something, be reassuring and yes. again we're on a lake yes there's boats going by you're gonna see it there it goes <laughs> do you have to be that close although they are not going to give us big waves like the last one they're going, going quite slow they're going slow um so but that must have been actually quite reassuring for you it as was. a parent like it just must be sort of calming to have you know that they do have that they bond, do. that connection, that right. they're going to have each other's back. And there are things cool. that they don't tell me as well, pertaining to each other. I'm sure. Which, it's, you know, and they'll, they'll go to their graves with that. And that's, you got to respect. I do. You got to respect. I do. Um, their privacy. Yeah. And, you know, as long as they're healthy. Yeah. And, you know, not making 
crazy, bad, life-altering mistakes right. in their life, if they've got some secrets and mm-hmm. stuff going on, I, I feel like all of us deserve a little of that privacy, especially in those teen years. Um, I know that I, with technology um, and cell phones, there's there's a lot when it comes to parenting, and um, I, I do believe that especially in those teen years that you do need to respect their privacy yes um but at the same time my kids knew that i was going to be doing random checks on my phone Mm -hmm. um and i did and it wasn't like i was searching through their phones and reading every single little text because that's not what it was about it was about making sure that they're making safe choices and being kind people um you know and there were some things that i came across which opened up Pandora's box. Some pretty serious, interesting conversations between me and the children. Um, But it was necessary. It was part of, um, you know, parenting. And, um, you know, I I did respect their privacy, but they also knew that I was going to be keeping an eye on them. Um, And And my children realized that, too, that they, they, my, my main goal was to keep them safe. Yes. I wanted them to experience the things that they wanted to experience. Um, and I knew that they were going to experience some of these things. I wanted to give them the best information I possibly could to experience some of these things without major consequences sure. <laughs> after the fact. And yeah. I, and for me, knowing some of the things that they were, they wanted to do, and we'll, we'll get right into this. Let's you know, do it. The, the, the drinking and Drinking. Um, They're sex, teenagers. They drink drugs. They have sex. These things happen. <laughs> and I am very open, and I think being very open and talking about it, and they don't have to listen. They don't have to follow up on these things. If they know something, where I'm saying, if this happens, you're welcome to call me at any time. Yes. If yes. this happens, there are Ubers. If this happens, they have an idea that they can do these things rather than getting into a car with a bunch of people who are drunk. Or there are things that they can do to minimize any any issues that they might have. Yeah. So we talked about this stuff on a regular basis. I, my main motto was: if if you don't have, if you don't feel comfortable, if you are drinking, if you have any issue getting in a car with someone who's drinking, please call me. Or I, you have Uber on your phone, take an Uber. And I have no issues with this whatsoever. None. Yeah, I've had those same conversations with my kids. And I like that you brought up, you know, you are constantly having these conversations. Because I feel like these conversations, it's not a one-and-done thing. No. It's not like, okay, honey, I'm going to go have the talk with the kids. And then you go do it. And then you're done. Um, I think it it needs to be just a constant open communication. And um, just having it just be part of the constant dialogue all the the time there's so many different situations that Mm -hmm. presented themselves that it's very easy to have these conversations on a regular basis i I remember literally thinking to myself um i'm gonna wait until the moment comes up and bring it up again and then bring it up again and anytime there is one of those opportunities you know Mm -hmm. those are like those teachable moments where um you know it doesn't have to be a 20 minute conversation it could just be a one snippet comment about something that's happened yep. when they might be telling you about a situation that happened at school or you know you might have run into a friend or you see something on tv those are great conversational pieces um you know you're watching a movie and a situation comes up and you just take those opportunities to revisit those conversations right you know like oh man how stupid was that gosh i wish that person had just called you know their parent or right. You know, exactly. I'm glad that you do that um, so that you're kind of reaffirming, you know, like when they do do it, thanking them, right. you know, and always using every opportunity using to, every, exactly. to bring up and reinforce those messages. You, you know, that each child is, each child is different. Each child has different personalities. And sometimes you bring up some of these discussions and topics that they don't have a comfort level with. And that's mostly the sex talk. So once one child of mine just wasn't comfortable with any of that. They did not want to discuss it. The other one was very open and had discussions on a regular basis. 
doesn't mean you stop talking to the one child who's uncomfortable. It just means you change your dialogue a little bit. Yes. Then. You can be direct with one and then you can be indirect with another. And it definitely, it definitely had paid off with the, the one that didn't want to have a conversation because now there is a dialogue as, as she's got older and we do talk about things. Um, she's, but she's quieter about it, but there's, but she's telling me, she's talking to me, she's having a conversation with me. And that's what you want. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be exactly what's in the book. No. Yes. Excellent point. Right. Or the way you planned. Um, as long as they are talking um, and know that they can talk to you if they need to. Um, and then I think that's really hard for a lot of parents um, because teenagers can go through phases where, you know, they're like little clamshells and they don't want to talk about anything and it's so uncomfortable. Um, I, I find that humor is often like one of those things that just really helps with the so, like, how, what did you do when, you know, you've got some kids that want to isolate themselves and be in their room and, you know, always be on their video games or on their phones and never talk to you and they will clamshells. How do you, um, or how did you? You find something that they are in, that, they, that they enjoy, that, that you can tag along with or do with them. You may not want to do this. You may not want to go to Sephora for an hour and look at makeup. You may not want to. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> or I did, you know. And that's, you know, little uh, tiny bits of conversation happen. Yes. You know, actually with my daughter, it's, um, she loves, she's a foodie. She loves food. So we go out to dinner. It's great her and I going to dinner and, you know, just talking. I think another way is that they do enjoy when you um, are embarrassed or you had some point in your life where you had an embarrassment. Mm -hmm. And that's a great teaching moment as well where you're like, this happened to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, yep. you know, I probably should have handled it this, this, and this. And they're like, really? Okay. And that is something for some some kids really want to have that. Um, realize that their parents are not um, the best decision makers at times in their lives as teenagers but they're as well. human. Exactly. They're human. They, right. They make mistakes. Right. Yeah. But it's difficult when you have two the exact same age. They're twins, um, and you, you know, the, the same rules apply. <laughs> the same rules apply. If one is doing something that that has a consequence and needs a consequence, um, it's going to happen no matter what. Um, it is what it is. They're going to have the same consequences for the same um, actions that they've had that are um, that may have to do with some of these things that they're involved in now or will be involved in because he is a thing. It's going to happen. But we all think, oh, as our children are like young. My kid is never going to do that. No, My kid's never going to do those things. Either. It will. Don't ever say it's, that. It's, 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 <laughs> learning. Will. it's learning for them as well. If right. they didn't do it, do you want to? I mean, I'm in the. Uh, I'm, if they didn't do some of these things and didn't experiment and things like that, and then you send them, and I feel this way now because mine are second year college, um, you send them away to school or something and they've now they're away from the house you never see them they might be doing some of this stuff and they don't have obviously the, the best role models in front of them so um teenage years um very difficult very difficult to remember 
every time the phone rings, every time you the phone worry rings. that that's yeah. what... Because your children don't normally call you. They touch me. <laughs> <laughs> True. So phone calls were very, very difficult. So that was double on top of that. So, um, yeah, um, driving, I definitely um, not want to cut my legs every teenage years for myself. Who taught them how to drive? You or your husband? Interestingly enough. So um, my husband did a little bit. I did a little bit. They preferred to be with me. at them constantly and um, then we sent them to driving school. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, and I'm not ironically, but, but nice for my children, which didn't happen with a lot of children, that they got their license two days before the COVID shutdown hit. Uh, so my children were beautiful. able to drive every day, day beautiful. in, day out, when there were no cars on the road for three or four weeks. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Everywhere. They just get in the car and they just started driving. Yep. Both of them went out, then one went out. Then one, then, so they were able to get out. And, you know, that was nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I I agree with you, the double-edged sword with, you know, the driving thing. I feel like it's the same with um, them getting jobs. Yes. Because with jobs comes money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with money comes more independence. And really have to be creative as a parent because you know when you have toddlers you can deal with time out or taking a toy away or whatever consequence you know right might be with a, a misbehavior in the school age years you can deal with grounding or taking video games away or god forbid yep. you take their phone away you have these things but goodness once they become teenagers it's like that all changes um, and uh, I'll tell you, I remember one of the eye-opening moments for me was when, just physically, my son was huge. Yeah. And, like, um, growing up, we we would always, like, wrestle. That was one of our things. When he became stressed out with physical exertion, like, we would just wrestle, and um, that would often help him. And then, oh, my gosh, in the middle school, in the teenage years, we... Literally, I remember trying to <laughs> scold him, looking up at him, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know, right. with the finger, yeah. yeah. And and one one time, he literally was listening to me and just picked me up like a sack of potatoes, put me over his shoulder, threw me on the couch, and we both ended up completely laughing. Yeah. And um, you know, so dealing with you know um, them and the mistakes that they make socially mm -hmm. and consequences, you know. If they're working and they have their own paychecks, um, my kids bought their own cars, and I was, you know, we wanted to teach them financial management, and we wanted to teach them, um, you know, how to do all of those things, um, but what am I going to do? Take away their car? It's theirs. Right. Exactly. Well, I had, we, 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 well, that was us, too. You know, my son did want to buy a car, and I'm like, what money <laughs> do you have? So that was not, that was perfect. But, but I said, "Well, look, the cars you can do that, but this is how much your 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 um, your car is going to cost." He's like, "Okay, well, I'll drive around this." I like this, the one that we have. This beep box. <laughs> the, the, the beep, when they were very disappointed when they saw the car in the driveway that we bought them, because it wasn't a you know Corvette. It wasn't a Corvette. No, it was, and it was like an like an old, old grandmother's car. You should have got a minivan. <laughs> yes. That fits more people. Would, Don't do that. <laughs> they, were just, they, were, they were disappointed. Like, this is the car you buy us? Yeah, this is it. We bought this for you. You're not buying it. We're, we're, we're helping you pay your insurance right now, which is astronomical. Mm. So you're, you're lucky. Um, but we're not putting a cent of gas, and we're not fixing any of this car whatsoever. So there were times where you know, they were on fumes. Like, we'll figure it out. Yep. We will figure it out. And did they? They did. They Good. figured it out. That's really what it is. You can't, and I, and I, I don't know if it's the, the, my upbringing that I was, um, that I, I had to do everything on my own by the time I was 16, and so I, I always thought of that in my mind. Well, my husband was a little bit different. He had the same exact upbringing, um, but he felt he had the opportunity and the money to be able to not do, to, to not have my children feel angst over certain things. So he wanted to put a little bit more money into it. We had to come up with that happy medium between both of us. Mm. And um, that was good for us. And we had to deal with that. And we had two at once, so we had to make sure it was done too. Yeah. 
And bringing up, you know, the fact that you and your husband might have disagreed, but you come together to one agreement is a super important um, point to make, regardless of what age your kids are. Um, you need to be a united front. Um, and uh, you're never going to always agree on everything in a marriage and in a family. Um, but the parents do need to be, I believe, a team. I believe the parents need to be a team. I believe the parents have to have respect for each other. Yes. Um, I believe that also you need to emulate what you're taught when you have kid children, um, career-wise or work-wise, things like that. Um, they, as, as all the way back to our previous videos, they watch what you do. Yep. They're watching you do more and more. And because of that, you need to have that united front to begin with. They will thrive off of that as well. They thrive off, they still thrive off a of routine. They need to have some sort of routine. Now, the routine now is different. They go to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock and they wake up. Right, right, That's right, right. That's a very difficult part of, of They need more sleep and um, they don't get to get that sleep. And then they have jobs now. So they really need to focus on what's the most important thing to them. And some of it is sleep. Yep. Yeah. And um, again, it's that structure and routine providing um, stability, providing a sense of security for kids, um, regardless of their age. And of course, their needs are going to change once they become teenagers. Um, but as long as they understand what the clear expectations are, they have that clarity. Um, you know, they will feel more secure because they know. I, I really um, I really feel like sometimes we as parents underestimate the toll that hormones take on some of those teenage years. Um, and I, I always think about like, um, I don't know how you felt after you gave birth, but pregnancy, put, it just wreaks havoc on us women. And then after you give birth, you have these just hormone craziness. And um, I remember times when I literally did not even feel like myself. I, I felt so uncomfortable. I didn't even feel like myself, and um, I know that was hormones. And so I often have to think back and remind myself with the teenagers, like they often are feeling just uncomfortable with themselves. And you can actually see it as well sometimes, it's just like, you know, just in their face and their, their, their expressions and the way that they're moving, their lankiness. And this, there's a lot going on. There absolutely is. There absolutely is. Um, and I, I think that um, when we're dealing with, you know, all of these things through their teenage years, we sort of need to sort of remember um, that it's not easy being them. <laughs> um, it's, it, you know, it's definitely difficult when it's something that they should, they've done, they should be doing or not doing, whatever the case might be, and you're ready to rip their head off. You've got to sometimes set, take a step back and say, all right. Is it really worth it? Is it really what's going on here? Is there something underlying? Or, you know, or is this really what, what it is? Is it really that they just didn't pick up their clothes out of the bathroom and, and there's wet towels all over the floor? Yeah. So. Right. Um, but, you know, I think that the, the jobs you were talking about are very important. They need to start some of that on their own and get out there and try to see what the world is like a little bit. Um, you know, you start that again as in you know, the middle school years or a little earlier. You give them little jobs to do where they actually have chores. Um, in our house, everybody did something. And no one, we didn't get paid for it. It was just part of our life. We, you do this, you do this, daddy does this, mommy does this. So we're all in the same, the same boat. And that, that actually continued throughout all of their high school career as well. Um, and my son right now is teaching some kids in college how to do laundry because laundry was part of life. I think that's an excellent point. Um, and some people, you know, believe in allowances and chores yeah. and all of these things, and everyone handles them a little bit differently. Sure. Um, but I agree in a community, we all pitch in. Um, but I do think it's super, super important that they do learn some of those life skills.
teach a teenager is how to apply for a job and it's work. How to actually walk into the store and ask for an application, fill it out, and return it. Um, I just feel like that skill is a life skill that um, is crucial. Is. So that no matter what happens when they're 30 or 40, they will always be able to take care of themselves because they know how to go get a job. And following up with, you know, a work ethic. Um, you always show up five to ten minutes early. You never leave early um, unless you've been given permission without asking. Because we don't ever ask. Um, you know, calling in sick. I feel like, you know, um, I love that you bring bring up, um, you know, being good role models and um, modeling it for them through our own behavior. Um, we don't call in sick. years, my rule was, um, you have to have a fever. Yeah. And I will take it with the thermometer, and yeah. if there's no fever, you're going to school. Right, right. Because we never knew. They could have been avoiding a social issue. They didn't want to have to deal with so-and-so, or they have a test that day. Mm -hmm. um, no, you're not getting out of that. And one of the consequences to that is, to this day, my kids don't call in sick friends that will call in sick because they want to go to a concert or um, they they do they have friends that do that and my kids would that would never even occur to them um, and I think it's because we we role modeled that um, through our own careers and um, my husband and I like we just don't do that because I think what I've like the biggest thing I've ever taught my children and I'll tell you right now this model in my house and I mean this is this has been since all everything I think for the little kids do everything to the best of your ability everything in your life to the best of your ability I don't care what you do mm -hmm. I don't care if it's making your bed I don't care if it's cleaning your bathroom I don't care what it is do it to the best of your ability where you feel in your mind that it was the best you could do mm -hmm. and that is all I care about and that, will, that will project on to the rest of your life as well. Excellent message. Excellent message. And I've, I've told my kids that um, very similarly, even for work. I don't care what you're doing for work. You know, um, shopping lobsters, mm -hmm. making beds, and, you know, doing housekeeping. I don't care what you're doing. If you are earning a paycheck, then you have my respect. Right. You are doing a good job. I don't care if you are a custodian or you're a CEO of a company. Um, do a good job at it. I completely agree. Um, but I, I think, you know, I mean, I think they're already the people that they are by the time they're teenagers. Absolutely. They really are. They're, they're, they're the people they are. Mm -hmm. um, what they choose to do with it and how you can um, guide them in what they want to do um, is... Um, up to you and them. Um, the twin thing doesn't really come into effect all that much other than you now see them as individuals but also see that bond that they have as well. Um, it's more of a social issue um, as, as, the tw as twins um, in their teenage years at school. Um, but you, that you definitely see um, the differences um, and you, um, you applaud um, their differences as well. Celebrate their individuality. That's right, um, and that's what, and that's what. You know, that was my main goal. As soon as I found out at nine weeks, I was having twins. My main goal was to make sure that they were individuals, and they're definitely individuals, um, and they have a life, and they have a life together too. They have a life together. I don't even know about they're in, they're in two different states. Um, and they have, they, there's things that they talk about and do and that I don't have any idea about, and that's exactly what I want. That's pretty cool. That is very cool. And today's their birthday. Oh, and happy birthday to them. Oh, I just <laughs> love it. I feel like that is so special that yeah. we're actually talking about them, um, on their birthday. So that is very cool. Um, can you think of anything else that we might have forgotten or that we might have left out? 
out or um, I feel like we've touched upon a lot, but I don't want to forget anything. Um, like I said, um, the um, social aspect, a little bit different. Um, teachers uh, do expect the same things um, out of each one if they've had any classes differently, so that's something you really need to talk to teachers about that they are individual people and they learn at different levels, um, especially in the, those teenage years. Um, and this is the time when they're, they're, the, the twin is definitely receiving, the twin is receiving. You're definitely seeing the individual emerge. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time and I love it that we've been able to be out on this gorgeous lake enjoying this beautiful weather. Um, so thank you for doing this for us. Thank you for us. I hope that those of the twins out there got some helpful information um, and hopefully we're able to minimize a little bit of the stress. I would have liked to have had this myself. Wouldn't that have been nice? It would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. So thank you. And so that was my video with Lisa talking about the parenting journey through those teen years, which can be a little bit tricky. I hope that you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure that you go ahead and hit subscribe, make sure that you follow us, hit like, share these videos with others. Um, it just is a great way to show support, but it also helps to create greater visibility so that more parents can see these videos and join us. Um, and definitely want you guys to be adding comments in the comment section so that um, if you have ideas that we've not mentioned that others can benefit from, um, please go ahead and do that. That's what this is all about. Parents sharing ideas because the more we learn, the more we share and the better parents we become. Um, so anywhere you see this video, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or go to heyparentsletschat.com, um, go ahead and add your comments to the comment section. Um, it would be appreciated by um, any of the parents that are going to be reading them because, again, the more we learn, the more we share, the better parents we become. So thank you for joining us, um, and I look forward to our next chat.